Hi, Greg Perry, the antiquarian horologist, uh, back here in the studio with another interesting specimen. Um, possibly around 1800, uh, we have a, a movement, a mechanism from Morbier, France. Um, these, as far as French horology goes, these started in the town of Morbier. It's a small hamlet on the Swiss and French border. Uh, they have a wonderful museum there. I urge everyone who's interested in clocks and watches to, to take a trip there. Very close to La Chaux de Fonds, which we've talked about in previous videos, uh, particularly the one where uh, Louis Chevrolet Sr. started, hence created the Chevrolet dynasty. And in addition, uh, uh, Jacques uh, Chose is, was there. He, he and his, his company, that's his company, they created all this automata, which was sold um, basically through England and not under his name. So you would have like retailers, just like Macy's or Harrods, Harrods of London, would buy those. And I'm being facetious here, but I'm saying a type of retailer like that would purchase his automata and sell it in London under their name. But we'll get that to another video talking about automata. But nevertheless, these are the basic workhorses of domestic clocks in, in England. Um, I'm sorry, in France. Uh, I'm back on, uh, back on the automata. Anyway, um, repose type affair here. This is very thin sheet brass forced into a mold. And that's how all this is created. You could create hundreds and thousands of these surrounds. So this is a dial surround of sorts. Um, very interesting. And they had a multitude of, uh, of these, you know, that could be, uh, that could be Lafayette, that could be, you know, Marie Antoinette. You could have an, any number, Louis, the Sun King, the Sun King's emblem at the top. And uh, so we have an enamel dial here. And remember that enamel dial is dry powdered glass. And first, this is a, a, a copper, uh, concave copper backing. And what they would do is they would cover it with um, a dry glass in white, and then they'd fire it and it becomes very smooth. And But this copper backing, this concave has to be absolutely perfect because everything that's irregular is going to shine through. Then they would come back and they'd actually paint this, uh, this quote, liquid glass. They'd paint the numerals, the chapter rings, the, uh, you know, this is for the, uh, the uh, alarm ring, the name, etc. They paint it on in black, put it in and fire it. So the higher melting point was the, uh, was the white and the about 20, 20, 30 degrees less would be the black. So when the black melts into, into the white, it doesn't melt the white and doesn't get a blur. So that's a little bit about the dial. What's kind of cool about these, but these were for the everyday person could afford in France. And these are workhorses. And we'll, we'll take a look at the inside in just a minute. Um, so they have alarms. Here's your alarm setting here. And, uh, and you have hands. And the hands are nothing fancy. They're very crude. These were pumped out by the hundreds of thousands, you know, from mid-18th century up until the, the mid-19th century, literally. So, uh, and, and the great thing is, as we're going to see as we go around, that the... Uh, this is more of a cage type clock. It's a straps. You have you have steel strapping inside, and uh, that holds this together. So um, let's uh, let's get another angle on this, and we'll take a look on the inside. So again, these these mechanisms were workhorses, and uh, you can see the general structure here. This has been uh, recently serviced here in the studio, and here's your verticals. These are your your vertical pillars here. And uh, all of your, your uh, arbors or wheel work are in between. So vertical pillars going into a, a, a cast plate at the top and then a cast plate down at the bottom. Okay, this base. And they're actually, uh, you know, they're, they're sometimes mortise and tenon in here or they're almost dowelled here. And everyone can take notice as this is operating on a much thicker cord. It's just what the French did at that point. They weren't using steel cable, braided cable, or even cat gut. So this is a type of cord they were using. But in cotton today, it's a nylon, unfortunately. Um, and these, the, the wheel work is absolutely pristine. And keep in, keep in mind that the, um, this, this, these mechanisms were made in Morbier. It was a town almost like... Uh, Liverpool, where uh, 80, 90 percent of the inhabitants had, uh, you know, part of their house was their clocks, every, clock workshop. So every house had a clock workshop. So one house may be producing, you know, the, the, the third gear on the time train, etc., or the, the scape wheel or the or the pallets. 
And, you know, you would have had multiple houses doing these things too. So it was, it was a huge, huge business. I don't know if we can see in here in the, the back of the dial. Um, we're going to take a look on the inside. Um, here's, here's, your, here's your alarm wheel right here with these multiple teeth. That's your alarm wheel. Okay. And then here's the back of the, of the front of the pan, the copper pan of the dial, which is coated uh, with, with a type of paint. And I, I had to coat that because it was actually breaking down. It was having a lot of oxidation. So, and uh, just take a look at the crutch here. The crutch is right here. The crutch is actually bent, moving around that winding arbor. So, I mean, typically we're looking at crutches that go straight down vertically, but this one is bent around the winding arbor. And uh, so we have a large bell here at the top, uh, a nice, uh, a nice bell, and uh, a sideward hammer. And let's uh, let's let's hear it for a minute. And uh, so I'm going to go around, and I'm going to actually set the clock in motion, and we're going to take a listen. And. The the beautiful thing about these is they were put in peasant type cases, almost uh, cases, tall cases with a female type body, um, wide hips, pinched waist, and uh, very interesting. And But they were mostly made out of pine and they had decorative paintings. So they were trying to give, you know, the, even the peasants a little bit of decoration in their house. It could have been the only beautiful thing beyond flowers in anyone's house. And keep in mind, the high style clocks were getting, a, you know, marquetry and some chinoiserie up in, in Paris. But, uh, you know, for the working class, this is what they had. But keep in mind, these clocks were essential for their business and for their livelihood, that they knew exactly what time it is and what to do and where. But these clocks have a much longer wear time in between servicing than the typical British clock with the, the brass plated sides. So anyway, thanks everyone for viewing. Greg Perry, the antiquarian horologist.